This is the Compass Camera 2, and today I'm going to show you how it functions. Now this camera is an incredible um, piece of work. It was built by Jeger Le Coultre, which is the same Swiss company that still makes luxury watches today. This camera was built in 1937 through 1941, which makes it nearly 80 years old. There were only 4,000 cameras that were made. This, one, this particular one is serial number 1247. This camera has the honors of being one of the smallest 35mm film cameras ever made. And it's very heavy. It's built of solid aluminum. Just an extremely well-built, rare little camera. Now to show you how this camera works, the first thing that you're going to need to do is to open the camera. So to do that, you actually just shake the camera a little bit and you'll see this first ring come out and gently pull on it and the next one comes out. Now you'll see that there are words and you just say close and open so you'll just pull it this direction to open on both of the focusing rings. Now the camera is open and unlocked. They also ha it has a lens cover which you can open here and a lens hood which you just gently pull out until it's all the way out. Alright, the next thing that um, we'll need to do is insert the film. This is the original film that came with the camera. It's single exposure plate film. Now to put the film in, you press these two knobs located on the top of the camera which will open the camera back and you'll take the film and you want the film that has the opening side to be facing the lens because that's where the exposure will be made. Now you just slide the film into this little red shelf in the back of the camera and then simply close the camera. Alright, now the film is in place but we still need to to pull the envelope up so that it's ready to make an exposure. So to do that you press these two lugs right here and then you would simply pull up on this paper envelope. I'm not going to do that today because I'm not ready to actually make an exposure. Once this envelope is up you keep pulling until um, it stops. Then you are ready to make the exposure. Once you've made the exposure you simply push the envelope back down into place and then open up the back again and this film would be ready to develop. So once you have the film in the camera, the next step is going to be to focus the camera. There are three options for focusing on this little camera. If you look here, you'll see there are small numbers around this ring. This is the focal distance ring and if you rotate it you could estimate how far you are from the subject and then take the picture. So it goes all the way from infinity to three, uh, let's see, to one and three quarters feet distance. Let's just say that we're going to be five feet away from our subject and put it here. Now this is a very rough way of focusing the camera because you have to just estimate how far you are away so there are two other options. The second option which is the simplest to use is the range finder. Now this functions just like any other range finder in cameras from that era. You simply put your eye right up to this piece, um, look directly into it, you'll see it looks like you're looking through a viewfinder because you'll see the image projected um, but there will also be a small yellow circle in the middle of the image and that that circle will show you a double image of the picture and you have to fo you have to rotate this focusing ring as you are looking through the viewfinder until the two double images become one single image and then you'll know when those images have lined up. 
that you are at the correct distance, the correct focal distance for your picture. The third option for focusing the camera, which is very innovative and unique to this camera, is the ground glass focusing screen. The ground glass focusing screen just pops out from the back of the camera, like so, and you can use it to look through the lens and focus the camera, rotating the focusing rings. For more details on learning how to use this focusing ring, you can simply refer to this instructions for the use of compass camera, which comes with this camera, and that's how I learned everything about this little camera. All right, so now that we have successfully focused the camera, the next step will be setting the f-stop. The f-stops are listed right on the front of the camera. It goes f3.5 through f16, and you simply rotate this knob to select your f-stop. Next you'll choose a filter. Usually you just want it on zero for the filter, no filter, unless you're using a orthochromatic or panchromatic film, which is more rare. You simply rotate this knob four times to get it back to zero for filters. Now to set the shutter speed, the numbers for the shutter speed are listed right here on this dial. So first you will need to unlock the shutter speed knob like so till you can see the red and then you can rotate this knob. Right here this red line marks what the time exposure will be. Let's set it on uh, 1 200th of a second and then you pull this down once more to lock it. Next we just need to cock the shutter by rotating this knob clockwise until it no longer rotates. Now we're ready to make the exposure. This is the shutter button. Simply aim at the subject. And we've made an exposure. Another special feature about the compass camera is that it is made to also work with roll film. Now to do that, we'll need to remove this single exposure film back. So we'll simply press these two buttons and then pull this pin out and remove this back. This camera also comes with the roll film back. So pull the pins out to attach it at the base and then you can lock it into place. Now to insert the roll film, unlock it, press the pins, open it. This is what the roll film would look like when it's been removed from its protected, light protective covering. So you simply need a take up spool which you insert into this part and then you would unroll the film and insert the full roll of film into this part right here. Then once you've inserted the film you would just wind this winding level or winding lever and there are cues right in this little window here that show you right now it's saying that it would be on the third exposure but you would keep winding it until you get to the correct cue saying that it was ready to make an exposure. Although this camera does not have an automatic light meter, they found a very creative way to have similar results using a manual light meter. To use it, you will look through the viewfinder and pull out the speed meter right here which has gradients from light to dark and you will slide this until looking through the viewfinder you can just barely make out the highlights in the subject in your picture. So once you get to that correct placement if it uh, is at the number 10 you will then come up to the shutter speed dial and 
this is unlocked so we can rotate it and you will see at the top it shows the seconds and the units so on the left hand side it's how many seconds per exposure for example one five hundredth of a second on the right hand side it's the compass units that the creators of this camera came up with to help you create an accurate exposure so we want to put it on the number 10 to correspond with the exposure reading we got and then there's another feature that uses the compass units and that is the f-stops each f-stop is assigned a unit number so you can see here that this zero or this um, O for overcast has a little two inside of it that means that at this f-stop we need to give it two compass units in addition to the 10 so we'll go 10 plus 2 is 12 and we'll set it at 12 each of the filters also corresponds with a compass unit so now we've done a little bit of math and figured out what a good exposure for this picture should be Another feature is the right angle viewfinder. Now in the instruction manual they say this is good for camera conscious subjects where instead of looking directly at a subject and aiming the camera at them you could actually be looking in this direction and have the camera angled in this direction and still be able to see your subject because of this little angle viewfinder. So you simply pull this out and look through the viewfinder and then you can take a picture of a subject who's in this direction. There's also a little level with a bubble here that will help you know if you have the camera at the correct level. And on the front, there's a depth of focus scale that can help you know if your subject will be in focus at a particular f-stop you're using. So with the f-stop of 4.5, your subject would be in focus if they're within 6.5 and, and 13 feet away from you. This camera is equipped with a tripod. It conveniently collapses into this small shape. You simply unscrew it open it up and unfold the legs and then you screw these back into the base then you attach the tripod to this little arm on the bottom of the camera and there you have a tripod that will keep the camera steady. Now in addition to being a tripod, this can help you take panoramic shots because the camera can rotate on this arm. So you would simply take your first exposure, rotate the camera until it get, comes to the next catch, which is at a 45 degree angle, and then it catches again, third catch, and finally a fourth catch and there you would have taken a full panoramic shot. This can also be used to take 3D stereoscopic images which were then viewed in stereoscope viewers which were very popular at the time and the same arm feature is used for that where the camera would be taken where the image would be taken from an angle like this and then again at a second angle and the two images combined would create a 3D image. One of the most exciting things about this particular compass camera is that as of May 2015 it is currently for sale. So here in the set this is a deluxe pig skin case that's original originally came with the camera. If I open it up you can see it's a handy storage for the tripod which folds up camera itself fits in this little pocket. We have several sheets of original film, the camera 
back for the rolled film. We have rolled film as well as several take up spools. And there's even a shutter release that fits in here, although this is not original to the camera. This camera also comes with film, roll film. It's hard to say if it would still work because it could also be 80 years old, but it is still in foil wrapping that may have kept it light sensitive. This camera also comes with the ever helpful instruction manual, the original instructions for the compass camera, with lots of great pictures and descriptions inside. Everything in this collection is in excellent condition, so be sure to come over to my eBay page and take a look at it to see if this camera could be the camera for you.